In this video, I will show you how I tattoo a long continuous shading with this gray wash. I was determined to make this video, so I convinced my brother to let me tattoo a shaded bar on his thigh just to show you how it works. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? I fill the first ink cap with pure black, the next one with two thirds black, then one third. For the last one, I use only one drop. I fill the rest with shading solution, mix the ink briefly. For this shading, I'm using a 3.3 millimeter stroke and working with eight volts. I set the needle so that it extends approximately two millimeters from the cartridge. If you're curious which machine I use, it's the Massful Pro from Dragonhawk. I'm very satisfied with the machine and can highly recommend it. You can find the links in the video description with the code Fani Tattoo, you'll save 10% on your purchase. Now, let's move on to the technique. I start with pure black. I apply a thin layer of Vaseline so that I can wipe off the excess ink more easily later. I begin with the whip shading technique and try to create a very dark area with a gradient outward. Unlike the packing technique for shading, multiple continuous passes are necessary. But don't worry, if you do it just like I do, no unwanted skin damage can occur. I'll also show the heel tattoo later in the video, and you'll see that it has healed perfectly. I would recommend buying some fake skin and um, just trying it out. On fake skin, more passes are probably necessary because it doesn't take the ink as well. But it's perfect for practice. With small circular motions, I fill in the little gap at the edge. Since I have a lot of experience, I work with the soft edge needle directly along the edges. Beginners can also use a round shader or round liner needle for the edges. It's much easier to work precisely with smaller needles. It's important when you work from dark to light to rinse the needle with distilled water in the next step. I mix the next shade of gray directly in the cartridge. The advantage of this is that even though I only have four ink caps, I can create seven shades of gray. Here, I am using the pendulum shading technique. It's my absolute favorite technique because it allows me to create super smooth gradients in all directions. Another pass is necessary here. By the way, I'm using a 23 Magnum Soft Edge needle here, but you can also use a 15 or 17 needle. Apply a thin layer of Vaseline again. Once again, I'm using the pendulum shading technique and creating the next shade of gray. Many people have asked in the comments how much pressure they should apply when pressing the machine onto the skin. Since this is a matter of feeling, it's hard to explain, but I'll try. Make sure to apply only minimal pressure, especially on sensitive skin. Too much pressure can cause the shading to appear blotchy. It might sound a bit strange, but I believe that if you watch closely, you can roughly get a sense of how much pressure I'm using. Now I'm mixing the mid-tone directly in the cartridge again, um, since we're now working with very light shades. I'm switching the technique from pendulum to the pull whip shading technique. It's perfect for very light shading. A great thing about this technique is that it's very gentle on the skin because the needle is being pulled. It makes a big difference whether the, the needle is pulled or pushed. In this case, the needle 
uh, glides much more smoothly over the skin, making it much easier to create a light shade. Although I need several passes to get the color into the skin, we end up with a perfect shade. Now I'm using the second lightest gray tone. As always, I apply some Vaseline and stretch the skin. When tattooing, especially when shading, it's crucial to keep the skin taut by pulling it in the opposite direction with your free hand. This ensures an even distribution of pigment and prevents the needle from bouncing or creating uneven shadows. So you'll notice that the better the skin is stretched, the better it takes the color. Light shading requires time and a lot of passion. I'm working especially carefully here because areas that are too dark cannot be undone. Once again, I'm mixing the ink directly in the cartridge, which in my opinion works perfectly. It's also possible to mix even more shades of gray, but I don't think that's necessary. Even though we're already using the second lightest gray, the shading still appears slightly darker than it will once heal. This is because the skin is open and bleeding slightly during the tattooing process which makes a fresh tattoo appear darker overall. However, since I know exactly which gray tone I'm using, I'm not worried about it. As you know, I always work systematically. The tattoo is meant to look perfect once healed, so I intentionally tattoo a bit darker. At least it looks that way right after it's done. The less we leave to chance, the more precise the final result will be. Now, let's move on to the lightest shading. There's no change in technique here, but you can see that the lighter the gray, the more visible the blood becomes. You shouldn't let that distract you though, because different parts of the body vary in sensitivity and some clients bleed more than others. Normally, the redness of the tattoo fades quickly. Most tattoos look quite different just 20 minutes later. Now you know how to tattoo a long, continuous gradient. This is the tattoo after two weeks. If you enjoyed the video, I'd appreciate it if you like it and subscribe to my channel. If you're interested in how I apply the stipple shading technique on real skin, check out this video here.